Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to Saints Joseph and Francis Xavier Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Ryan. Now please rise if you are able and let us sing number 608, Christ the Lord is risen today, number 608. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, happy Easter. He is risen. He is truly risen, and it's so good to be with you today. And so, my friends, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in, ba in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, Rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad. This is the day the 
rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become a cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises, a lamb, a sheep, redeemer, Christ who only is sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous, the Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what thou sawest wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting the shrine Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen. Our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the, two, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that, had, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So as many of you know, I wasn't always a priest. I had a, a life prior to this where I, I worked for a large technology company down in Austin, Texas. And some of you may have heard this story, but I, uh, there was one day in particular about 12 years ago where some friends and I woke up on a Sunday morning bright and early around noon. And we all had those headaches that sometimes adults have after a long night. And we went to one of our favorite places called the Hula Hut, which is right on Lake Austin. And so we went to the Hula Hut for, for brunch, and we, it was crowded. It was really crowded, and we were trying to figure out what was going on. We were asking ourselves, is it the Masters? Like, what, what's happening this weekend? And they were like, no, it's not the Masters, because there's kids here, and they're all dressed up. And then it dawns on me, oh no, it's Easter. <laughs> At this time in my life, I, I didn't really practice the faith. I was living a life very contrary to the faith. And so I was treating it just like any other Sunday. Except that this isn't any other Sunday. This day is the day that changed everything. Since the foundations of the world, you have been on God's mind in a very real, particular, and unique way. So much so that God's creation wasn't perfect without you. That you are the one that has captured God's heart in a way that he was willing to give up and do anything for. And so when God created us in his image and then gave us the trees and the mountains and the oceans and everything that we hold to be good and beautiful and true, and we sold ourselves into slavery by choosing selfishness and brought sin and death into the world, it broke God's heart. And he said, that's not good enough for you. It's not good enough for me and each and every one of us. And so God said that I'm going to fix this. I'm going to make this different. And so he prepared our hearts. He prepared the world. He laid the foundations to let us know that he was coming, that God himself was going to abandon his divinity, that he was going to abandon the glory that he has to become one of us. These pathetic creatures made of dust and dirt and bone and flesh and blood and sinew. Because he said, you have my heart. And so he was born in a cave in the little town of Bethlehem among sheep and goat and oxen. And as he cried his first cry and took his first breath, he thought of you and me and each and every one of us. And then just like you and me, he lived the human experience. He knew what it was like to go hungry, what it was like to have his fill, to have friends and tell jokes and play games, what it was like to go out for a, a night of fun with his friends, to fall and skin his knee and know that only a mother's touch is able to calm certain things to learn what it means to learn from your father and to work with your hands. And then in the fullness of time, 
He showed us what real love looks like. A love that's not selfish or self-centered, but a love that's willing to give above all else for the ones that you care about. And as he stretched out his hands between heaven and earth, he thought of you and me and each and every one of us in a very real, particular, and unique way. And even in that agony, he was filled with such joy because he knew that he was fixing this mess that we had found ourselves in. And he was showing us the way. And so three days later, the day that we celebrate today, he opened his eyes to new life and he broke the chains of sin and death and showed us that we're not meant to be slaves, that we're meant to live in freedom. Because if it's not free, it's not love. And he showed us that we're so much more than our mistakes. That we're not defined by our sins and our failures, but we're defined by the Father's love for us. A love that goes beyond anything else to go to the very depths of hell to bring you back. This day is different. And so we have a choice then. Is do we treat this as just like any other Sunday? Do we treat this as if it's a day that we just go about our business? I mean, it doesn't look it by the amount of people who are here. We recognize that this day is different. But it means that we have a choice. Either, either that's just a nice story to make us feel good when times get tough, in which case we just go about doing our business, and really everything that we do is folly. Or... God really did become one of us. And he redeemed you, and he loves you, and he calls you and says, you are mine. And if that's true, if this day really is different, then that means that we need to live a life that is different. Not a life that's dictated by comfort and pleasure and wealth and glory and honor, but a life that's dictated by love and service and sacrifice. The Lord tells his disciples to meet me in Galilee, I will go before you. He does. That Galilee in all of our hearts is that place where God has called you and he has shown you his love and that he, he desires you, you above all else. So on this day that's different than every other day, I encourage you to spend some time going back to that moment, that Galilee Shore moment where the Lord has spoken to you and he has called you by name and he's shown you that all that he's ever wanted for all of eternity is your whole heart. Please stand. My dear friends, on this day, above any other day, it is different. On this day, we recall the day of our baptism, which we have been redeemed by Christ, called by Christ, and brought to new life. And so if this is what you believe, I encourage you, with full, ardent voice, declare, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith that we are proud to profess in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's great love for us, we turn to him now with the prayers of this community and family. Our response today is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, as we boldly and faithfully proclaim the resurrection of Christ, 
May we always bear witness to his merciful love, bringing hope and joy to all people. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, for the wisdom and dedication to work together to protect the right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness for every human being, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all those received into full communion with the church this Easter, may they continue to grow in faith and love of God and service to others. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, as we share in the joy of the resurrection, may we renew our commitment to love and respect one another. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, especially for Art Devereaux, may they find pathways to healing, the peace of mind, and hope in the promise of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for Brian Masterson, May they rest in peace and joy as they come at last to the banquet of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And for those held in special intention at this Mass, for Lou Gluns, Andrew Leiter, Betty Leiter, Hansueli Wick, Liliana Sushu, and Molly Harris, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for an increase in vocations to the diocesan priesthood, religious life, dedicated single life, and holy matrimony here in the Archdiocese of Chicago, and particularly from our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence, submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the altar. There is only one collection today. Ushers are taking up the collection during Mass, but we welcome and appreciate your electronic donations through PushPay. Please note that there are also QR codes inside the back cover of your hymnal for donations. And as always, thank you very much for your continued financial support of our parish. Let us sing number 613, At the Lamb's High Feast we sing, number 613.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wonderfully reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. (laughs) 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once we were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. But John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. So just a quick note about logistics for, for communion. So we'll have six Eucharistic ministers located here up in the very front of the, the sanctuary, right on the step. We just ask you to come and fill in wherever there happens to be an opening. If you're standing along the sides, please come in to receive communion when you get to the break. And those of you who are in the back or up, on the, up in the choir loft, there will be a minister coming up to you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 1031, Taste and See, number 1031.
worship the Lord, all you people. Please join in singing number 1027, One Bread, One Body, number 1027.
I'd like to call forward our ministers of care who will be going out to the community. Friends, as you go out to the community to share with those who are unable to join us here at Mass, please share with them the word of God, the living bread from heaven, and that Christ our Lord is risen from the dead. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the Resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Father Wayne Watts, myself, and for the entire, or the entire staff here at St. Joseph and Francis Xavier Parish, we want to wish you all a very happy and blessed Easter season. Just know that you're in our prayers. Please pray for us as well. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. go forth let us sing number 609 sing with all the saints in glory number 609 